I do look forward to seeing the Tetrarch in a novel setting, beyond the leaden discourse of the temple. I share these thoughts with no one, for my sisters, and sometimes even Nefrini, will then make even more fun of me when he visits. Especially Arato. She is already prone to strumming a love song on her lyre, dedicated to me as if it was sung by him. Then it is natural for Thalia to jump in with a line or two of her own, and the end result is that all my beloved sisters are almost asphyxiated with laughter at my expense. And yet, it excites my heart to see what is in theirs, for I know they are acting upon their, their intuition that the Tetrarch loves me. They dare not even dream whether I love him, for my face is set in stone whenever it is spoken of, just as it is for all other men, and not once, not ever, to any living soul, have I breathed a loving word, cast a quivering sigh, or lowered my eyes at mention of his name. My eyes involuntar involuntarily close as I recall the last time I saw him. I was sitting high upon my tripod in the Adderton's shadowed recess, whilst his eyes reached far beneath the complex weave of threads covering my face. All the other suppliants blended into a grey mist as the god took hold of me. Only he remained vivid, the eternal flame reflected in his burnished breastplate and matched by the fire in his eyes, which never once strayed from my hidden face. I wondered to myself if he could hear the beating of my heart beneath the pure white folds of my finely woven gown. Timocrates, who has my tutor and guardian, knows me better than anyone, has carefully informed me that the Tetrarch, like all of his ancestors, is a highly religious man who sees the Pythia as a gateway to the divine. My daughter, you are the singular voice of Apollo, sun god and healing priest. You hold the key of knowledge over all men's dreams and the secret farms and elixirs of life, so you should always remember that it is not your face or body he desires, nor even your wondrous hair. The Tetrarch, in his search of his destiny, and that is why he comes here, as do all other men. Forget you are a woman and be as you are, a perfect undefiled instrument of the divine will. It matters not to me why he comes, I later say to my sister Cleo, though in truth I am still smarting from Democrates' pointed words. The Tetrarch and I are bound together by naught other than history and his wish to know what fate has in store for the Eludi. She was first amongst my sisters to guess what the others would also come to understand, and offered gentle words of solace. There is power you wield which has governed gods and men since time began. What is this power? The whole of history is determined by beauty and virtue, she told me in a soothing voice, for it is these that the gods and men prize most highly. Present either of them with these things and they will reward you with their favour and offer you protection. When he next knelt before me with his dark head bowed, he could neither have seen the roses taped between my cheeks, nor beheld my trembling lips beneath the cloth I have woven. If only I could have reached out to touch him, shining as he was like a great bronze statue by the soft white folds of my dress. Later, when I was seated in the Aditon, he asked me once again about the foundation of a colony, but the oracle excelled at ambiguity and I could feel that his patience had worn thin. The next morning I learned he had taken off on his horse at first light of dawn, and was not to return before the occasion of the games required it. Upon hearing this, I plunged at once into the dullest of moods, which lasted throughout the remainder of our scorching summer and well beyond the fine autumn festival. The festival was the greatest it had ever been, but no matter. No matter either the amount of cadgling on the part of my sisters, or number of amusing anecdotes from the, sla from the slaves, not even a dose of my own well-made medicine. Nothing could rouse me from the pensive state which held me captive throughout the long days. It was only Sappho I felt who understood my troubled psyche. The moon is down, Pleiades. Midnight, the hours flow on. I lie, alone. 